I'm going to show you how to soft proof an image prior to sending it to the printer. Now, soft proofing is a great tool. It allows you to pre visualize your print prior to ink hitting paper. So, the first thing we need to do is to confirm that we have only one image opened in Photoshop. Next, we're going to go up to Image and down to Duplicate, and we're going to create a copy and we're going to call that copy monitor. And this is going to be our reference image. This is what we're going to shoot for when we make our print. We want to look as much like what we see on the screen as possible. All right, so now we're going to flatten our monitor copy because we don't need access to those adjustment layers. And now I notice as we go back and forth between these two that there's a size difference. So I'll, on the monitor version, I'll just double click on the hand tool and that brings it down to the same size as the file that we're going to print. Okay, so now we're going to hold down our option key and we're going to create a new group and we're gonna call this group OSA underscore and that stands for Output Specific Adjustments. And those adjustments are being made to compensate for legacy fiber. So legacy fiber. And we'll say OK. And now holding down the Option key, we're going to add in a curve. We're going to set the blending mode of that curve to luminosity. And then we're going to go in and we're going to add in another adjustment layer. And this is going to be hue saturation. And we're going to set the blending mode of that to saturation. And then we're going to come back here and I'm going to get rid of these two masks because we don't need them. And now we're going to go up to our view to proof setup over to custom. And this is where we're going to set the device that we're going to be printing to and the paper that we're going to be printing to. And this case, it is the SureColor P5000 printer, and we're printing to the Legacy Fiber paper. And here we want to make sure we have the preview turned on, we want to have black point compensation turned on, and we want to have simulate paper turned on. All right, so the black point and the simulate paper color, these are two attempts on the part of the color management system to emulate the printer paper is going to look like. It's going to be less bright white than the screen is capable of producing, and it's going to be a little bit less black than the screen is capable of producing. So we're going to say OK here, and as we go back over to our command tilde, we can see that there is a difference. Looking at it, obviously the blacks are quite different. The whites up here, the brightness, you can see we're losing a little bit of brightness up there. So I'm going to go to my curve. I'm going to double click. I'm going to grab my targeted adjustment tool. I'm going to move over to this area here where we noticed the brightness was a little bit less. And I'm going to take that up, uh, just to tweak it up a little bit. One or two points when you're doing this can just make all the difference in the world. All right, so now I'm going to move over to a darker area, and we'll say down here, and I'm going to pull that down a little bit. So we're adding some contrast. Now I'm going to toggle back and forth and see what the results. We're going to be looking at the mid-tones up in the sky is a perfect thing, and probably at the hamburger too. The hamburger is probably going to be a good reference. So as we go back and forth here, Okay, I just see a minor, minor difference. Uh, we've gotten a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go to this point right here. And I'm going to take that back up one point. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good now. If we just keep your eye on the sky and uh, don't worry about the, the trees or the drive-in sign, we can see that we're losing a little bit of density on the, the dark red. 
But we're going to put some saturation adjustment in next, so we'll see what that does in terms of correcting that. So we'll go into hue saturation, and I'm going to start off at about 12. That's usually a good, a good point. And now we're going to go back and forth. So the hamburger looks pretty good. The sky looks pretty good. Not a lot I'm going to be able to do with the red. I've uh, tried in the past, and I know from experience there's nothing I can do. So we're just going to hope that that uh, prints uh, a, an appropriate red when an ink hits paper, and I can assure you that it will. So we've now proofed this image. And if we go into our layers, and let's close that now. So this is a minor change, as you can see, but when ink hits paper, it does make a huge difference. It's that extra little push that takes your print from being a pretty ordinary print into being an extraordinary print.